Hi, it's Alaska Granny. I'm in my granny camper. I'm spending some time with my little grandchildren and you can probably hear the raindrops. We've had a lot of rain while I've been visiting with my granny camper. Spending rainy days in a travel trailer with some little children gives you time to think about things. What if I needed an emergency kit? How many of you don't have one ready to go and you keep thinking, well, I'll get to it or it's too complicated or things have cost so much more lately, I don't have any extra money. But you know what? Nothing that goes into a absolutely must-have emergency kit costs very much money. You can start with a simple bag. I have these simple heavy-duty bags. They're the shopping bags that came from the store. Sometimes when you have things delivered, they give you bigger, sturdier bags. This one from Walmart is super sturdy. I also have a very heavy-duty bag from Target. A bag to put your emergency gear in doesn't have to cost anything. You probably have some sort of bag or tote or shopping bag, something already in your house that's sturdy enough that you could fill with some supplies. Don't get stuck on the thought that I don't have a big, hefty backpack so I can't have a bug out bag because that's not what you actually need. You need a collection of supplies that if there's an emergency, you can take care of yourself and your family. What are some inexpensive items you could put together for your emergency kit? Start with a flashlight. I even got this one at the Dollar Tree and it's I like it a lot. It has a forward facing light and a flashlight. It has dual purposes and I think it's really great. I've been enjoying using it in my trailer. It's come in very handy for an area light and a flashlight. And it was only a dollar. I think they're probably a dollar twenty-five most places now, but that's still not a lot of money. Pick up an extra set of batteries because sometimes we don't know how long we're going to need our emergency supplies and you will need that backup power. Next, think about getting some simple candles. You probably already have some around your house somewhere. They don't have to be brand new. You just need to have a few of them on hand. Put them together in a bag and then make sure you have some sort of a lighter or some matches or some way that you can light your candles. If you can find Strike Anywhere matches, these are the best. These are harder to come by anymore, but they are absolutely a great kind of match to have if you can get them. You can pick up packages of matches or simple lighters in most common everyday stores. And so that's not something that's very expensive. You could probably get these for a dollar or two a piece. What if you need a tool? Look at this tool. This knife I got at the Dollar Tree. It even comes with a little case. And so you can drop it into a bag and it's protected. You're, it's not going to cut a hole in the bag and you're not going to reach into the bag and hurt yourself. Is this the best survival knife you could want? No, but we don't always have to think of an emergency as a survival situation. Most emergencies are not survival situations. It's where we need to solve a few problems, take care of ourselves and our family for a few hours or even a few days until we can figure out what to do next or things smooth over and get back to normal. So if you already have some kind of a pocket knife, some kind of a folding knife, even a multi-tool would be excellent. Get something and put it with your emergency gear. If you encounter a rainy day like I did, have some kind of a poncho. It's just a great big piece of plastic. It can be used for a lot of ways to keep yourself dry. You can also uh, hook it together for some kind of a rustic shelter if you needed to. Having something as simple as a rain poncho can be really important and a very comforting item to have in a stormy situation. I made a video before about how to make a poncho and I'll put a link to that video if you're interested in how to make one. Next you'll want to include some cordage. I got this rope at the Dollar Tree. It's very sturdy and nice and it really works well and I've gone back and bought it many times. It's 40 feet long. It's very sturdy. I've used it to tie out my dog. I've used them for clotheslines. I've used them to tie up all kinds of things and I found that this uh, holder that it's on it works is very sturdy it holds it very well and it even has some little notches on it if you just want to wind it out part way you can hook it here and then it doesn't all come out and undone get some sort of rope or cordage because it can be invaluable in tying things up holding things together or even using that 
poncho to make a shelter. Have a first aid kit, and if you don't have a ready-made store-bought first aid kit, at least get together some basic first aid supplies, some band-aids, some ointments, some cotton balls, Vaseline, maybe a pair of tweezers. You can even put it all just into a Ziploc bag and include it with your emergency gear. One of the things that I've decided is very important to have in emergency gear anymore is a face mask. Not because I'm concerned with the pandemic, but what if you're in a forest fire? What if there's a big dust storm? And what if you stop somewhere in an emergency and everybody else is wearing a mask? You don't want to stand out as someone who's not wearing one. There are some situations when you may be required to have one to go in a store or into a doctor's office to seek medical care or maybe you just want to have one if everyone else is wearing them and you don't want to stand out you want to blend in be the gray man be incognito this can help you uh, not only blend in with everybody else but can help give you a little bit of anonymity that maybe people won't say hey isn't that so and so i think i recognize him then they're not necessarily going to if you take any life-sustaining medication, make sure that you have a few days supply of that with your emergency gear. An emergency situation is the wrong time to find out that you don't have your necessary medication. So if you have a few set aside with your emergency gear, you have avoided making an emergency into a medical emergency also. A few days of food can be as simple as some granola bars maybe some kids applesauce pouches get something that's a grab and go for breakfast lunch and dinner put it all together in a bag your emergency meals don't need to be the most delicious nutritious or balanced meals ever it needs to be food that can sustain you something that you can grab out of your pocket open and eat it gives you the quick energy to keep going to figure out what to do next so just get some simple open and eat things. You can grab some granola bars at the grocery store. Get a few little things that you can just pop into a bag that you can tear open and eat right out of your pocket if you needed to so that you can keep going and figure out what to do next. Every emergency kit needs to include water. So whether you're sheltering in place or you need to grab your bag and go, make sure that you have several days supply of water, which is a minimum of one gallon per person per day for as many days as you think you might need it or have the room to store it. Water is heavy. It takes up a lot of room. And so it's nice to have it in different formats. You might want to have a barrel of it if you have room to store at your home, but that's not something you could take with you if you needed to. So have a few grab and go bottles as well. This is not the kind of kit that's going to have you go off and live in the woods for the Armageddon SHTF, but it could help smooth the problems that can happen from power outages, wind storms, winter storms, somebody gets sick and you can't get to the store. You want to have some things that can sustain you for the uncomfortable events that interfere with everybody's life. Have some supplies you can grab and leave your home. Have some supplies already stored in your car. And if you work away from your home, have some supplies in your office in case you get stranded. There's an emergency there or you need to then figure out how to get home. There's all different kind of things that can happen. We don't know what could come next, but you can mark my words. Everybody's going to face challenges in the future. The more we've thought about it and the more prepared we are, we can be prepared and not scared and we don't panic. We can make the best of any situation. If you enjoyed my video, I hope you'll share it with someone else you think might like it. Please subscribe to the Alaska Granny channel.